You're listening to the Energy is Love podcast. Energy is Love. The Energy is the Love podcast. The Energy is Love podcast. Energy is Love. The Energy is Love podcast. The podcast for the universe. That's the good. Energy is Love yeah. podcast. Uh-huh. I was realizing as I was getting everything set up that it's been well over a month since you and I have done this alone. <gasps> really? Yeah. And I'm texting during it. I'm letting Stevie know we're recording and I have funny things to share. (laughs) Well, yeah, I do. I'm like, hey, guess what we're doing right now? No, she sent me a um, a gif with a goat, a baby goat Mm -hmm. that was hiding under a stove. And it, it, um, it came out from under the stove and looked at the camera at its at its human and started wagging its little baby goat tail. And so she wants a goat. And I said, where are you going to keep the goat? And she, the brilliant child that she is, is like, in your house. <laughs> all in your backyard. And then she keeps sending selfies of, like, please mm. faces. And so that was that's why I'm like, ah, oh, we're recording. <laughs> stop. Yeah, stop bothering us stop about Stop before I say goat. yes. Uh, you're so cute. We're not getting a goat. It was a wagon its tail. <laughs> <laughs> it was really cute. <laughs> Came out and was like, hi. We, um, like I said, we haven't recorded in a long I time. Maybe say hi to everybody. Hi. Are you nervous? Yeah, a little I'm bit. so uncomfortable. I'm sweating. Um, it's 900 degrees. It's warm. I made a conscious decision to wear the wolf shirt. Did you? Mm-hmm. I like it. I do, too. It's my wolf shirt. It is your wolf shirt, and I like it. Why'd you get, why'd you get embarrassed? I'm a dork. Is it because I'm over here with my legs? Yeah. yeah doing is your it distracting? workout? distracting? I'm totally going to take a picture. Don't. No, my don't. Thighs look bad. Oh, my thighs God. thighs don't look bad. They do. They don't. <laughs> so then people can see how you're working out during the podcast. Oh, yeah. It's probably not going to. I'm going to see that picture and it's not going up. But here we go. I'm getting time in. So we've Can't had get a... steps in. <laughs> I can get time in. Time in. Time in. Um, we've had a lot of people come on the podcast lately. How has that experience been for you to have guests and to have people that we have to interview and carry on conversations with? They are nice people. Yeah, we've they had wonderful people nice on people. lately. And I've met some incredible people through it. Some you have already known and some you haven't. None. I Well, Devin. I knew Devin. Yeah. Is that one out? Not yet, but Not it yet. will be by okay, the time well, this comes out. It's I out. know Devin. <laughs> Tune into the episode with Devin. <laughs> Not Devin's a stud. Um, it's hard for <laughs> me. <laughs> it's hard. I. It's hard enough to have conversations. Um, just like sit down. Like I'm. It's hard for me. I struggle in that just to sit down and be like, okay, we're gonna get to know each other right now and be friends. Let alone while it's being recorded. And while there's a camera on and then to try, I thought I was going to be okay because I've been doing this long enough with you Uh now from when we first started. And I was like, (laughs) hi, do you like chocolate? I'm Stephanie. Are you thirsty? (laughs) I'm Craig's wife, (laughs) you know? And so then we had him sitting in front of us and I was like, it was back to like, I don't know how to hold my, my neck. <laughs> I didn't know what's how to talk. Left arm doing? I don't know what I was supposed to do. I don't know what's happening. It was really, really hard. And then I got tasked with uh, finding people to interview. And I'm like, I have yet to do that. How's that going? It's not going. I found somebody that I thought maybe, and then I didn't like it anymore. Yeah. It was a podcast I was listening to. I won't name it. <laughs> but then I didn't like it anymore. I'm like, well, that's it. I guess I can't find It's so hard for me. It It is is so hard. It is such a different dynamic that my whole mindset just goes, go to sleep. I can't, I don't know. Yeah, it's been been a good long time since we've had people on the podcast. Since you've had people on the podcast. This is my first time interviewing people on the podcast. Yeah. I had never done it, so I did not know what to do. (laughs) (laughs) I forget how much of a, um, it's just different, right? There's definitely a, a difference to it. And then being able to carry on a conversation, being able to guide a conversation, being able to kind of be in the conversation without just sitting there being like, so tell me about your day and then not paying attention while you're preparing your next answer or your next question or whatever. But And then I can't do the whole, like, I feel like I can do it okay with you, but the part where when they're talking 
And then I could jump in. I'm like interested. I've never met them before. And I'm interested in what they have to, I'm interested in what you have to say too. I just realized how that sounded. That's not what I meant. But I'm learning about them. So I'm not ready to cut them off when they're in a flow so I can keep the conversation. So I'm just like, (laughs) learning. It's so hard to talk. It's been fun. I, I don't think, I don't think I'm, I don't think that's my strong suit. So no, I don't know. I choose to, for my interview, for the people that I want to bring on the podcast to talk to, I think I'm going to bring on Craig <laughs> and Craig <laughs> and Craig and Glenn and Doyle, please. And Craig, because <laughs> I'll be able to talk to Glenn and Doyle. Right. I, I'll, that'll happen. Words will come out. I still need to read that book. Yes, you do. Um, so do you. Yeah, so do you. There's so many things. Hold on. I wanted to double check and make sure I was on the right place. Are you? Uh, First off, if you want to be on the podcast and you're interested in being a guest on the podcast. I'll do a really good job talking. Come uh, stare at Stephanie while she (laughs) stares at you. (laughs) Uh, Reach out through the website. It's energyislovepodcast.com. And also, I want to shout out. I'm looking it up right now. Uh, This podcast that you're listening to is now available on, I believe it's pronounced Ghana. I can't imagine it being pronounced any other way. But it is a streaming platform in India. And so we just recently became available on that platform and got a bunch of people listening in India now. So hello. Thank you for listening and tuning in. We'd love your feedback and your insight if you want to reach out and contact us as well. So as always, always. we put the podcast everywhere. Podcasts are available. I love it. Including if you are like old and you don't know how to work your phone... (laughs) You don't have to be old and not know how to work your phone. And you're not quite sure how to find podcasts. Sometimes phones are hard. If you can manage to send us an email, I will send you a digital copy of each episode so that you can listen to it if you'd like. Oh, let's let's flood the smart asses <laughs> inbox. <laughs> Everybody ask for digital copies. It's 900 degrees out here, babe. It is. Is that why you just agree to send every episode? Digital? Only old people. Only old people. Barb's going to get to a point one day where she's going to need that. <laughs> she's going to need that assistance. Now, we'll have to, you know what, Barb what's, will, what's the digital platform? Is it going to be for Windows or for Mac? I think we'll probably have to send those people a CD. <laughs> we'll send you five <laughs> episodes on a CD for nineteen ninety five. <laughs> <laughs> Shipping and tax not included. Um, did you catch me? I did. That's good. I have so much. You do? Yeah. Yay. So since we've been talking about how... Oh, we have to, obviously we're recording podcasts like all the time, and we've had a ton yes. of episodes and a lot of guests. I have been holding on to a bank of stuff to talk to just you about and to go through really? with just you. Oh, yeah. I'm so excited. There's so much. I've missed, not that I haven't enjoyed people on the podcast, but obviously I can speak a lot more when it's you and me. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not afraid of words. Yeah, it's been, it's been a while, and I have a lot. Has. I'm ready. I don't know what I have. Let's look. Well, there's, you a, start. there's one thing that I have that you're just now scratching the surface of. Oh, what is that? Um, and I actually saved the website. Did you? Yeah. and It's uh, such a scratch of the surface. I don't even know where you're going with it. I'm going to read you. This was recently released back on the 24th of July, so we're only a few weeks away from this. Okay. Um, so oh, goodness. I think it's this year and maybe last year, the Pentagon has been releasing more and more information uh-huh. about... UFOs and about aliens Mm -hmm. and like legitimate footage and documents basically saying we have located and like we've got footage of unidentified flying objects and you're listening to Rogan's podcast right now with um, some of that alien shit that he talks about. So there's a lot of information that's coming out right now. And I don't know if you're aware of this recent information that was released just a few weeks ago. Probably not. So the Pentagon. It's an old old interview. (laughs) From the, <laughs> <laughs> the Pentagon, which if you're from outside of the country, is a pentagonal shaped building in Washington, D.C., full of assholes. <laughs> the government. If all, <laughs> My phone, phone confirmed it. Phone just went <laughs> off, like, so the government's listening. Look, it's going crazy. Yeah, they're fucking us up right now. Am I getting a call? You're being or? hacked by the Pentagon. I think so. Anyways, babe, Somebody's this is the headline. the doorbell. All right. Uh, The headline is, the Pentagon has reportedly found off-world vehicles not made on this earth. So that's the verbiage from the document. Okay. Off-world vehicles 
off-road. Hold on, put your fucking okay, phone down. Okay, I was trying to see if it's got that off-world vehicle. Well, I don't know. Maybe it's an off-road vehicle. Off, <laughs> off-world. Off-world vehicles. Off-world vehicles. Not of this planet. <sighs> So let that sink in. You haven't heard that yet, right? No. And I'm trying to, like, my brain's trying to, are they talking about, like, space cars or spaceships? Because they've already said UFOs. Shut up. Space cars? You said off-world vehicles. <laughs> yes, off-world vehicles not made on this earth. Not made on this earth. What How do the they what? know it's not made on, like, my brain, hold on, hold on. This is one of those things where it's like, you know, when, um, oh my gosh. What's the night show that they go out and they ask you questions on the street just to see how stupid your answers are? Oh my gosh! From the Late Show, I think so. Jaywalking. When they yes, this is like an episode of Back a in the Day with uh, Jay Leno. Because I'm just like, what's a vehicle? What's not of this world? All of a sudden, my brain just broke and I can't form thoughts. Off-world vehicles not made on this planet. Yeah, let that sink in. Well, they just out. I, out I don't know it. how to they let just, it sink in. They just announced that they found UFOs. That they uh, have UFOs. That they have UFOs. Yeah, not that they just found. Like there's oh. one in the sky, and we have the footage of it that we've released. Okay, but that they have the actual fucking. That scares me. Why? It's amazing. Why? Why does that scare me? That scares me because this country, this like as you said, it's a building full of assholes. They're not kind. So if they have these crafts, I'm guessing they were vehicles, not crafts. We don't know. Vehicles. Could be if a they have these could be a four wheeler. It's an ATV. <laughs> it's a transformer. Is it Transformers? <laughs> um if whatever they have extraterrestrial was navigating this Perhaps. device. Right. Device. Yeah, like they're not gonna be nice to them. So if they have them, I'm guessing it wasn't. Well, that's the I'm next thinking it's like force, step, right? so like they're just. It's not the next logical step, but it's got to be like they're going to be like mean and testing and dissecting and doing all these horrible things, which is going to create enemies. Unless they were already dead. And sure. They, like the other thing too is they weren't specific, right? They didn't give any well, then, specifics, when are they? right? Yeah. So they could totally be flying saucers from the '40s, yes, or they could be current shit that they have been able to like find wreckage of or something like that or i mean it's really mm. easy to just let your brain wander and think about like a downed flying saucer that they recovered and the alien was already taken back up to the mothership oh i hope so right who knows i would you would think that i guess not you would think but in my mind you would be like well if you're going to say there's ufos and we have ufos why would you not just say by the way we also have the alien that flew the ufo so they either don't have it because they think PETA's hardcore when it comes to animals wait till they find out that you know they've been torturing these poor aliens <laughs> <laughs> i feel like it's a thing that you, you think we I, would torture them you think we I would do experiments think on them we would torture them you know? i know Stephanie used to people. work at Area 52. Oh, my God. So tell me more. Oh, my God. <laughs> <That's> not... <laughs> Google Area 52, and you'll find some information there. Perhaps a picture of Stephanie. You will not. Stop. Oh. I don't think that. You don't think they would well, torture? Sure think like of what they're doing to wouldn't. humans. I know. Let's just look at the border. I just, know. Just innocent people coming over from Mexico. Yeah, because just it, illegal aliens yeah, from Mexico. that are humans, and yeah. look what they're doing to them. But no, they're going to be nice to space people? Yeah, they're going to fuck no. them up. Yeah, it's going to be horrible. It's going to be horrific. Horrific. So I don't know if you have gotten to some of the parts in the episode of the Rogan's podcast that you're listening to where they- You keep saying that. <laughs> Stephanie's listening to Joe Rogan's podcast now because she's turned against all women. <laughs> Stop! You give me so much shit for I this know, show. I know, because he's such a... Oh, we can't just... I don't know what to say. Yeah. He has good episodes sometimes. He does have good episodes with very sometimes. very interesting people and so, smart people yeah. and all sorts of wonderful so stuff I to like learn. I like this one. I, I will let... I like Ray <laughs> cherry pick the Rogan episodes. It's like, okay, which one can I actually hear any information yeah. on and not just Which be livid be the entire time but um they are oh, they have found oh no no the footage of the spacecraft that they have um that was from the fleur 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 
Fleer, I think it's Fleer. Fleer. Uh, I just keep cameras thinking of the that they TikTok. have. N- well, it's a Tic Tac. So Tic Tac, yes, not Tic Tac. Ah, oh. <laughs> uh-huh. yeah, okay, damn it. That's the shape of the of the craft, but the pilot of the uh, Tic Tac. No. No. Of the fucking jet. The. The uh, Top Gun. Oh, I haven't jet. got that far yet. I haven't heard the response. That's why I want to watch the documentary because it's not. I mean, it might they might have showed the clips on the YouTube yeah. episode of it, but on the podcast you can't can't see whatever clips they're talking no, about. They have um. They talk about the propulsion system for this, uh, for these device for these ships that they have seen mm-hmm. and that they they're not have. Talking about the audible reaction. No, so they have, like, the pilots that are, like, in the air with these ships watching them, filming them, you know, mm-hmm. like, they are sitting there watching them. And these are, like, veteran pilots for the yes. Navy that have, you know, years and years and years and years and years of experience. Yes. And so it's, like, a it's legit. Viper. Not Maverick out there. <laughs> Viper. He's like, I've seen some shit. <laughs> this. <laughs> You're a dork. <laughs> um, but he, they talk about that they these these some of these aircrafts that they're watching – and that they have footage of, they don't have the same propulsion systems that we use. So they don't have gas power propulsion systems. Yes. Where basically everything that we use, we light something on fire and then it shoots us forward. So it's a propulsion out the back and then we go forward, right? That's a science term. <laughs> <laughs> That's straight scientific talk there. Yeah. Um, but they don't use the, 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 saucers the ships the aircraft the um vehicles from other planets vehicle don't use the same propulsion system yes they talk about like anti-gravity propulsion systems systems or something it's fucking crazy it is and it's real like i don't know how people like we're at we're we now in are in a world where flying saucers ufos unmanned or unidentified flying craft are real yeah and we can't explain well, it. I don't think we're not now in a world. I think we've been in a world. There's now government saying, okay, this is That's this true. Is a thing. Yeah. I've known it all along. Yeah, you have. <laughs> That's the day I was born. There was a part of it where they were talking about how um, they have reports of them flying over nuclear missiles. Yeah. And how somehow the codes were messed with and the nuclear missiles were disarmed. Yeah. That hit me so hard. The One of the things that they were saying is they took that as a message that um, they see they see our best weapons and they're not impressed. I don't think it was like a, a challenge. I think that was showing, um, I think that they were trying to communicate peace to us. They're like, don't use these. These, like, why? And just, boom, shut them off. Like, don't do this. You think so? I think it was a peace thing. I, think I don't they, know. They were turning off our nuclear weapons. Well. What is a nuclear weapon going to do? It's going to fuck some shit up. It's not just going to fuck some shit up. It's going to fuck everything up. Well, that's and one of the. And then it's just going to boom, boom, boom. Have y'all seen more games? That's one of the beliefs is that that's, because Roswell was back in the 40s. Yeah. Which was right around the same time that we were creating the atom bomb. Okay. And so that's the speculation that that's what brought their attention to this planet was us splitting the atom. Yeah. And so then they started coming around and being like, what are these fucking retards doing? Exactly. We got to keep an eye on these guys now because they're and fucking stuff And then they turn it off. Up. You're like, this is dumb. You yeah. guys can't use these things. What are you doing? Right? You're going to destroy the entire planet. Don't do this. Look, it. we're going to turn them off. We can turn them off. Don't use them. We'll turn them off. Don't make us come down. It's like, don't make me pull this car over. <laughs> yeah. They're saying. It's, I see it as a peace thing. They're like trying to save us from ourselves of our own Yeah, there are idiocy. so many possibilities. I, I think it's a peace thing. Yeah, it could be for sure. Yeah. I'd love to think that it's just love. Why can't it be? It totally could be. They're probably Why listening to the be? Energy is Love podcast well, right now. We make a difference. Oh, did you? Yep, phone just went off. It's the Pentagon. I and get the you. It's not the Pentagon. It's not. <laughs> I know. Please. Stephanie and I have this belief, and it's not even like a pretend belief. It's been okay. tried and true, tested and proven over yeah. and over and over and over mm-hmm. again. When we are having a conversation, and we speak something, or we say something, or we th- sometimes it's even if we think something, um, our phones will respond. 
And it's not like our phones. <laughs> I'm like, you are correct. <laughs> yeah, our phones don't suddenly be like, <laughs> yes, majestic one. <laughs> That would be cool if we could get him to do that. I think we can. Um, I'm gonna, I'm gonna program it. No, but at those exact moments Done. in time when we're talking or when we're saying something or whatever the case may be, it's so varied and so many different examples of it. But at those exact moments, our phone will get a notification of some sort. So the phone will vibrate or ding, whatever the fucking notification is for whatever's going on right now. And uh, it's true. It's just true. So aliens are totally listening to the Energy Is Love podcast right now. It did it the first time. I know. I just had a thought. What is it? It is off topic, but it made me giggle. <laughs> Are you ready? Mm -hmm. <laughs> so I'm like, oh, that's cool. I can see the time now, too. So I can, and you don't have to, like, do that thing in front of get where you're, like, they're talking, and you're like, hold up. Yeah. And then you look back at them. You can see it. But I thought, if this isn't angled right, then the whole whole video, I'm just going to be, like. <laughs> <laughs> With your legs. <laughs> She's working out There's her legs, folks. It is. It's totally covered. Okay. There's another camera set up underneath the table. That's funny. <laughs> but just that made me giggle. Like I'm sitting here just like, mm. yep. <laughs> you don't even know. <laughs> it's just like, hello. <laughs> so, yeah, that was the big thing that um, I've been waiting to talk to you about. Because I knew that you hadn't seen I, any of that information. I about. haven't. Off-world vehicles not made from this planet. It's just crazy, right? It, it really is. Just like saying that sentence, it's hard to make my brain like... Yeah, it's crazy. Cause it's, I think it's it's just because they're admitting it. Like, it's not something that I'm surprised about. But the fact that they're saying it and still trying to do it in their, like... Are you ready to start seeing them? Um, I think I already have. I know, but, like, for real, for not... I'm not um, saying what you didn't see wasn't for real in the past, but, like, are you ready to start seeing them as clearly as we see each other? I and... don't know. I don't know if that's what it is. I feel like... I don't know. Maybe that's what's going to happen. Like they said, maybe if they're talking about it, it's because um, we're about to start getting contact a mm -hmm, lot. And so now mm -hmm. they're like, oh, I guess we better tell the public. Right. You know, or is it because they're about to do not not aliens, but the government is about to do some really shady, shitty stuff that they're like, OK, aliens are real. Look over here. Could because be. they're about to like really. Yeah, could be. They could be distracting us from what they're really doing. Because that's not something they do. Yeah. No, it's not. Not our government. <laughs> See? <laughs> our government's amazing. I know. We need to stop talking about the government because they're do. clearly listening. They are. We love you, government. No, we don't. Pentagonies. Oh, it's my favorite sparrow hawks. Yeah. I love that name. It totally may not be a sparrow hawk. Let's find out real quick. Because this is good podcasting. It's, it is. Um I have so much more. Oh, let's do it. I'm excited. This is fun. As I'm you're energized. falling asleep. No, I just yawned because I forgot to breathe. Yawning isn't a sign of tired. It's a sign of your body not having enough oxygen. So you... <gasps> Turns out they are not sparrow hawks. Don't Google sparrow hawks. That's what we don't have flying around is, our house. Is it a porn? Uh, nope, it's no, definitely not a it? porn. <laughs> it's just another <laughs> bird. <laughs> oh, well, what is it? It's a fucking sparrow hawk, dear. It looks like a little hawk. Can I see it? Yes. I'm curious. Absolutely. Yeah. See? Little sparrow hawk. He's cute. Mm hmm. He's real cute. He'll fucking yeah, eat your eyes cute. out. He's cute. So, on a serious, serious, serious don't note, look is there stuff don't, over I just there? told, don't look over there. What is it? I just there? said, don't look over there. Stop looking. <laughs> the neighbor kid is watching us over our gate because I said what we were doing, but, and so we're, being, okay. we, have a, we have a live studio. <laughs> <laughs> and it's awkward. Oh my god, it's so it's fun. just like little faces just like popping over the fence like. So they're just like watching yeah. us. Yeah. Yeah. Kids are wonderful. If you don't have any, you should totally get some. They're amazing. I don't know what I did. Sorry. Yeah. Have some oh. kids. They're awesome. Mm -hmm. I, have... I don't know what I'm supposed to do. <laughs> <laughs> is it hard to not look at it them? It is. And I gave a little wave at once and then it looked like they were about to come over. So I was like, look away. Yeah. They're totally... Are they still there? Uh-huh. God damn it. I don't know what to do. Just sit just in there watching. Okay. I think it's just one of them, too. Probably. <laughs> Probably. It's not weird at all. <laughs> no, I have a serious thing that I want to talk about. Let's do it. You and I have been doing copious amounts of work in the last yeah. month and a half. Yes. Stuff that we haven't been able to 
like we haven't shared on the podcast just because we've had Uh-oh. guests on and we've had other things going on and we've been busy with other things. What are we going to divulge? In the midst of all of this stuff that has like been happening and going on, you and I have been doing serious, no bullshit, emotional fucking work with each other. Yes. And it has been massively impactful for me. Me too. Yeah. It's been yeah. super, uh, Sorry. I dare say, uh, life changing seems so silly to say, but it's been majorly life impacting. Some of the stuff that you and I have covered, some of the ground that we have covered in the last month, month and a half, has um, set me on this trajectory of. I feel like I'm on the precipice of a new phase in my life. I feel like Ooh. I'm on the verge of a new evolutionary phase. And um, it's all coming to fruition and okay. culmination this year and especially within the last few months. Okay. So That's cool. I apologize to you if I don't remember the specifics of whether or not I've talked to you about this or whether or not this is something that you and I have Oh, this is going to be brand new. I can talked about it, I, don't, it, I don't think it is. It's brand new. I, I really I don't. Tell. I think okay. we've talked about it. Okay. But um, I don't know if I've gone into great length about it. Okay. And I know that I've probably talked about it on the podcast before at some point, but that's okay. It doesn't matter because we talk about so much shit on the show that who knows? We can't keep track of any of it. Okay. So I used to think, Steph, that growing up, I used to think that I had issues with relationships and with women that I had to, like, figure out, right? Yeah. I used to think that, like, that was the thing that I had to figure out and then I was going to be able to, you know, kind of get my life together because relationships with women are, like, the most important thing and... Eventually, I was going to find the woman, right, and going to have a really in-depth relationship with her. Psst, that's you. And uh, so it was important. Yeah. And it is important. But I have realized over the last little while that I have major issues with relationships in regards to men. And it's almost like like on the same level, if not more detrimental to me in my life than it than the issues that I've had with women and it sucks <laughs> and it's almost like I mean I'm sure it's because I've kind of dealt with the process of uh, like my my issues in regards to women and relationships with them and this makes it sound like I have issues with women I don't have issues with women but just in, as long as we make those sandwiches and keep your. <laughs> <Shut up. laughs> I'm just kidding. I'm just um, kidding. <laughs> no, just in the context of in a relationship, right? Yeah. And um, in the last little bit, I have really began to look at and not even just look at, but like shift the pers. Not the fuck. <sighs> so the. It's like I have a whole new set of. Um, words and ideas and processes and like it's a whole new container and container makes it sound limiting but it's a whole new way of thinking that's probably the easiest fucking way I don't know why I couldn't got to that immediately it's a whole new way of thinking about relationships with men yeah. and I'm thinking about them in <clears> the exact <throat> same way that I think about relationships with women Okay. And so what I'm thinking about is I'll just go back in time to long before you and I met back in the day when I would find a girl that I liked, mm-hmm. when I would be, you know, when I would meet somebody that mm-hmm. I liked that it was that was a woman and the process that would then follow. Yeah. And so I would meet a girl that I liked. Um I want to spend time with her, I want to talk to her, I want to hang out with her, I want to go out with her. Um everything just kind of progresses down that path where I'm super focused on them. I'm very much, um, you know, excited to see them, excited to hear from them, excited to spend time with them. I'm excited to learn about them. All these different things that take place during a new relationship when I, you know, in the past when I would meet somebody. And um, so for me, that process is like 
the process of not just kind of meeting somebody and clicking with them, but then the, the deepening process of falling in love with them. And I am now using that same uh, mindset or thought process in regards to men. Yeah. And not just the men that I'm meeting today, but going back and looking at how clearly that was <clears throat> what was happening my whole life, like all the way back to when I was a kid and you would, you know, meet a new friend as a little boy and suddenly you fall in love with them and you want to spend time with them and, you know, they're the coolest thing ever and you guys hang out all the time and everything was so um, amazing and beautiful yeah. and wonderful and it's such like this fulfilling, enriching relationship and then it would end for whatever reason and then I would be devastated. Like I would be heartbroken when I would lose some of these relationships with men over the course of my life. And I realized it was the same broken hearted, raw emotional feelings that I would go through when I would, when relationships with women would end. Really? Mm -hmm. I didn't know that. You didn't share that. Yeah. It's the same. <laughs> oh, sorry. No, you're okay. I, I, I'm so sorry. <laughs> oh, you're good. It was, it was that, that, that I, I'm sorry, keep going. I'm um, sorry. But it is that it's the same feelings. It's the same emotions, yes. right? The only, I mean, it's, it's so silly to even have to designate it because it doesn't make it, it doesn't matter. It's not important. But the only, the only difference between it is obviously I don't have the physical attraction along with falling in love with men that I would with women. Um, but it's it's literally the exact same emotion. It's the exact same process. I meet a guy that I like, that I start to kind of click with, that we kind of get along. And then I start to get nervous. And I'm like, I don't know, you know, I, I'm like, I don't know what I'm going to do. I'm nervous when they come over. I'm nervous to spend time with them. I'm nervous to like... Like if they call or text, I'm like, oh, I don't know if I should immediately respond or call them back when really I just want to be like, hey, what's going on? I want to talk to you and I'm so excited. And um, it's the exact same fucking process. Yeah. And I've just never really looked at it that way, nor have I ever allowed that process to be that. Yeah, I've never allowed that process to fully be that. You're right. The process of falling in love with a man that... I, I mean, it's so, oh, it's so interesting on one hand. And then it's also like exciting on the other hand. I feel like it's a new way for me to approach relationships with men yeah, and have a new understanding of what it is. And then it's also like really fucking sad. Like it makes Why is me, it sad? it's not sad in the sense that it's happening or that I'm looking at it <clears> this way. I, what is sad is I go back and I look at all the relationships that I think, um, you know, like the pain that I have about the relationships that have ended. Yeah. Um, like I still have a lot of that pain inside of me of some of those relationships over the years with men that ended and that yeah. ended poorly. I still have a lot of that sadness and a lot of that hurt. Like, the fact is I've been hurt by a lot of men. Yeah. And that's hard to say. Like, that's hard to kind of sit with as a man. Throws throws against your masculinity. So much sense. so, right? Yeah. Like, I haven't, when I say I have, I mean, there is no physical pain that a man has ever caused me that I feel I am still suffering from. Yeah. Right? I can only think of, well, I mean, with the exception of perhaps my brothers when we were younger, all the physical pain that I endured during those times, that still affects me for sure. But I'm talking like no man has ever beat me up and I'm like traumatized by it. Yeah. But I have had so many damaging emotional like hurts and cuts and pain from the hands of men that I haven't really processed through and I haven't really healed from. I'm just now realizing that as I talk about this. That's something that I hadn't really thought about. So that's the sad part. That's the cool part. What's wrong with me, right? It's not cool. The fact that you can see that now and then that journey is now beginning. Yeah, the awareness. Where you can heal that part. Like that's, like I'm sorry that that's happened. Oh. Men. Those Rogan people. 
right? <laughs> Men, right? Am I right? No, I'm kidding. I'm trying to make jokes because I'm uncomfortable. I don't know what to say because I feel so much for you. I think just having that awareness and being able to say those words. Men don't talk like that. No. They're too afraid of what they may look like. They can't lose their man card, you know? So the fact that you're just open enough and connected enough to your emotions that you will be willing to say that and then in yourself to see, oh, I need to, like, look at these parts. That's huge. So... It is sad, but I'm like, oh, I'm so excited for you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's exciting, but it's scary. And it's oh, yeah. like, like I said, I, I'm i just sharing that part now of having to realize I need to go back and kind of allow that yeah, pain and trauma that I've experienced over the years with some of those men hurting me emotionally. Like even that, just saying that, I'm just like, don't say that. <laughs> right? That doesn't even sound good coming out of my mouth that men have hurt me emotionally. The fuck they have. I'm not going to talk about that. Yeah. Right? Um, <laughs> now yeah. I want to stop talking. Oh, please don't. Let's go on to uh, aliens. There's aliens out there. Um, but yeah, the idea of being able to go back and sit through some of that pain and relive some of those experiences in a sense to kind of heal some of that, um, that's important. That's some stuff that I'm going to have to do that I want to do. Not I'm going excited. to have to. I want to do that. Yeah. And then there's also like moving forward, what do I do, right? What do I do in regards to because it's one thing if I feel this, and this is the thing too, is it's a feeling. It makes total sense to me. Like if we put it down on paper and break it down. And I can I've I've shared some of this lately with some men. Yeah. Um on like some of the calls that I've done with every man, um, as well as our group in Salt Lake. But so I think it resonates with men yeah. when I share it and they kind of look at it in that perspective, but it's also like, you know, what do I do with that? What yeah. do I do with that now? And it seems, um, like it seems scary yeah, to think about trying to, cultivate and build relationships with men from that space as opposed to this kind of like indifferent space, right? This space of like, ah, whatever. No, yeah, sure. Fuck. Let's hang out. It don't matter. It's not a big deal. Right. If you're busy, whatever. That's the space that I've been in my whole life with men where it's like deep down inside, I want nothing but to spend time with them. Like deep down inside, I'm like, can we hang out tomorrow? Do you want to come over in the morning? We'll drink coffee and then we can play outside and we can do all these different things. And you can come to the store with me and we can just hang out and do stuff and visit. Like there's men in my life that I want to do that with. Yeah. There's men in my life that I want to spend that much time with and hang out with that much because I love them. I love being around them. I love the way they make me feel. I love the way that they think. I love the way that they... I mean, the conversations mm -hmm. that I can get into with some men are these huge, amazing, beautiful conversations that are fulfilling and rewarding and healing and beautiful. And, like, I just want more of that. Do you know what I mean? Um, but it's really hard. I am finding myself still behaving in that fashion of, like, yeah, whatever. Yeah, no, that's cool. It's all good. I'm sure we'll, you know, yeah, we'll talk eventually. When in reality, I'm like, I want to talk now. Like, what are you doing? What are you doing? Are, are you busy right now? And um, it's just because, I mean, it's as simple as that for me with wow. this new thought process. <clears throat> I'm just simply falling in love with men. And it's not with every guy. It's not with everybody, right? Yeah. Just like anything else. And you have varying degrees of it. Right. Just with anything else, there's guys that I like, but I don't necessarily fall in love with. Right. And that's fine. Those friendships are good. Um, and I think that like the. Like the deep. Really fall in love with. Experience is I don't want to say it's few and far in between, but it it's not. I don't want to. It's not even. I was going to say it's not common and that's not true. It's just <clears> not. <throat> It's not for everybody. It's not with everybody. Yeah. Right? It's only with the guys that I really click with. And then it's like, oh, my gosh. And I can think of so many. Can you? Yeah. I can think of so many men over the course of my life that oh, I have fallen in love with. Okay. The sad thing is, is I can think of so many of those relationships that end poorly. Yeah. That 
have some sort of like, it's one of like, it's, I guess it's one of two things with men and this is super stereotyping. So if you're a man and this doesn't land for you, then you're a liar. (laughs) (laughs) But I feel like with relationships with men, it's one of two things. There's either some, some event that takes place or something that happens where there's a falling out and it's usually shitty. Like it's a, it's a shitty experience where you have a falling out in a sense where words are like back in the day, you know, you would have just fought when you were eight years old. Yeah. Um, but because we don't typically do that anymore, but you have like these events that cause a falling out of the relationship. And and then the other side, I think the other thing that takes place is just because of that level of indifference that men approach relationships with, with other men, then it just fizzles and fades away yeah, and disappears because we just approach it so much with that indifference because somehow that is deemed masculine or somehow, you know, somehow that is like the appropriate response in a sense. And I see, unfortunately, I see it with Asher. I see how he approaches relationships with his friends with indifference, where he's like, whatever, yeah, I don't care, yeah, whatever, I want to hang out, yeah, whatever. And inside, I'm like, I'm sure he, like, is super fucking excited to hang out with some of his friends. We see it. He gets fucking giddy. Like, he gets all sorts of, like, super excited. But to have him express that, I don't know. Don't go down that road yet of how we get him to fucking. Why not? Because I don't. Do you want to wait till he's on the on the cusp of 40? I'll tell you how we do it. Okay. How do we do it? You show him, the, right? Exactly. The man in your life has to do it. Ooh. It's not to say you can't contribute, but I have to <laughs> show him that behavior first and foremost. Otherwise, it's just throwing, you know, shit against the wall. How many men right now are in your life that you feel that way about? Mm. Like right now, not throw your, like right now. So. You don't have to name them. I mean, I'm going to ask you later. <laughs> no, I'm trying to think of I, like the men in my life right now that I am in love with. I can think of one, maybe two. And so, like I said, there's varying degrees of it. Mm-hmm. But like, let's go, let's just, rather than trying to break down all of it and categorize all of it, let's just go with how many men in my life right now am I like, I could spend damn near every day with. Yeah. And I would want to talk to them every day. Mm-hmm. And I want to like, you know see what they're doing mm-hmm. and three, maybe three. shoot me a text and show me, you know, I don't even care what it is, but, okay. um, how many of, uh, one, two, three, <sighs> that makes me sad. Yeah, right now I can kind of really only actually think of two. I was the third, the guy that I was thinking that's the third guy. I'm like, uh, that's not really the case. It's something different. Okay. Um, but it's that best friend in love feeling. And that's what I'm talking about. It's like falling in love with a best friend. And right now I can only think of two. You probably can think of them, too. I think so. Yeah, you probably know what I'm talking about. Should we tell the podcast? No, because (laughs) I think that there, I can also think of other in your life that if it is not their name said, is going to have be some hurt feelings. (laughs) So I'm like, "Mm -mm." (laughs) uh-uh. But there's also, like, men that I feel like are in my, um, in, in my space that I could fall in love with. Oh, that it's okay. almost like I'm trying to see if, you know, it's almost like a courting period of hanging out and going out on dates and seeing if you guys are going to hit it off and want to continue to, you know, hang out. All right. There's a couple of guys like that in my life. Oh, okay. Okay. So, I don't know. It's, this is interesting. This is it cool. Is I'm, I'm excited to see what you do with this information. I fucking shut down and bury it. Oh, well, that's that's that's, <laughs> that's... <laughs> burn this podcast down. All right. Never aired this episode. <laughs> well, there you go. Or yeah, or or that's what I'm trying to do. Is like, what do I do now with this new frame of reference? This new thought process. 
moving forward? How do I kind of approach it? And what do I do with it? And and I think, I don't know yet. Yeah. I don't know what I'm going to do. I think for now it's just sitting with it, sitting with the idea, sitting with the terminology in a sense. And oh, all these words are so silly. It's literally just the shift in thought process of like one thing in your life that you've always looked at in a one specific way, now looking at it in a different way. That's all this is. Looking at this in a different way and figuring out what does it mean and going from there. I don't know. I don't know what it's. It's pretty cool. I don't know what it's going to mean or what it's going to look like. But it's pretty cool. It is pretty cool. I'm excited. I'm excited for you. Yeah. I'm nervous. This right. was the deepening of this thought process because I think this is something that I've I don't know if I've necessarily talked about it on the podcast before, but it's something that I've thought about before. Okay. I just haven't thought about it in this depth. Okay. Like to these layers. And it all came on the heels of an experience that you helped me through not long ago. And then there was another experience um, where I recently, um, just to give context for the people listening if you go to everyman.com, you can sign up for some of their calls that they do. They've really transitioned their uh, organization extremely well, and they do um, weekly calls. Like every day of the week, they have Zoom calls with men all over the country and all over the globe getting on, and they have a variety of different topics that they'll cover depending on the call and things like that. But it's a really unique space and an opportunity for people to connect, and it's awesome, and you can go check it out. Um, they also have a new online platform that is like super fucking awesome that I would highly recommend guys check out. Um, but I was on one of those calls and I, I told you this too. I talked to you about this, but I realized what I did was immediately anytime I meet a man, even in this online platform, even, even on a Zoom call, anytime I meet a man, I I have to identify I have to place them in a I have <laughs> I have to judge them and then place them in a box of whether or not I'm better than they are or they're better than me and so I always look for something that is going to make me better than them some judgment um that is going to mean in my brain alone right because this thought process is just mine that um some sort of judgment so then I can safely say, aha, there we go. I'm better than that guy. And the only reason it is that way is because I then feel safe to be in the space with men. And <sighs> this is another one that is like a huge Sorry. shift in um, perspective and thought process. I've never thought of it this way. Mm -hmm. I was kind of aware of how judgmental I was about other men. But I thought it was partially just being an asshole. And okay. I was like struggling to, um, I was struggling, I was like feeling very guilty and shameful when I would judge other men because I was like, damn it, don't do that. Don't judge people. We shouldn't be judgmental of other people. You know, you never know everybody's story, all those kind of things, which are very, very true. And so I was being really hard on myself internally when I realized I was continually doing this. So it was becoming more and more aware of how judgmental I am of men, men specifically, because that's what we're talking about. And, um, and then I just had the clarity of like, fuck it. It doesn't, it isn't from this place of being a judgmental asshole. It's only from this place of trying to feel safe in the moment and feel safe in the space. And so I can literally think over the course of my life, every time I would go into a space that was some male dominated space or even when there would be other men there mm -hmm. or boys right back when I was a kid or a teenager, I would always identify the, the part about that person that I could identify for my own frame of reference and my own mindset that would either make them stronger or weaker than me. And if they were stronger than me, I would do one of two things. I would either idolize them and make them like this, you know, person that I looked up to, or I would say, fuck that guy. And I wouldn't want to spend any time with that guy. Um, and then on the flip side, the majority of the time, it's not the person is stronger than me. It's the person is weaker than me 
or not as smart as I am or not as capable as I am or like there's a myriad of fucking judgments that I would place on people. And then once I have that judgment, it then allows me to be safe in the space because mm -hmm. I am better than they are. That's the verbiage. But I realized the reality is it's not a I am better than that person. It is how do I make myself feel safe here? How do I make myself what is the thing that I do in order to feel safe so that I can be here in the moment, so that I can be here in the space? All of those kind of things. And the realization of this, dear, like the the shift of this is, oh, fuck, groundbreaking for me because it may, like, it's twofold. I get the, I have the um, relief that I'm not such an asshole, which is really, really nice. Because, you know, I've carrying that for a long time of thinking that I was just a really big jerk and I needed to be less of a jerk. So there's a big relief from that. But then inversely, it's like, oh, fuck, I hardly ever feel safe. And then it's the realization of like, I have to figure out how to be around men and be in the space with men and go into spaces with men and have a like now it's the realization that I don't feel safe in those spaces and that has never really been clear to me yeah that has never really been something that I was aware of in my mind and in my thought process it was like yeah I'm fucking safe like I was n I, I, like there's the men that I'm afraid of like physically are so few and far in between very rarely have I ever like I don't know this guy could totally kick my ass I just don't have that thought process so the idea that I didn't feel safe with men or didn't feel safe in a space with men, like, no, fuck off. Of course I feel safe. Why, why would I not feel safe, right? I can kick everybody's ass in here, right? But it has nothing to do with that. It has nothing to do with being able to kick somebody's ass. It's totally the emotional part of I don't feel safe around men. They're going to make fun of me. They're going to laugh at me. They're going to hurt me. They're going to like shun me and ostracize me they're going you know i'm going to be the outsider i'm going to be judged uh they're going to talk about me behind my back i mean you just name it all these things come up that just do not allow me to be safe in that space or all those fears come up that stop me from feeling safe in that space so hence my coping mechanism of immediately uh judging and identifying and then Moving on because now I feel safe because I'm better than they are. And that's just fucked up. That's such a fucked up coping mechanism. To one, like, there's a part of it that's fucked up. And then there's, I'm so ramp, Baby, I'm going to stop fucking talking for a minute. Let me take a breath. You keep talking. Okay. <sighs> Sorry, I'm overwhelmed. You're heart. okay. You have just really opened up and looked inside yourself immensely. That was amazing. That was amazing. There's so much that I can't wait to hear you process more and process with you and watch the yeah. ways that this now manifests <sighs> and changes and expands in your life. I'm super excited. This is hard. Like you just, you're telling me you're a fucking awesome. You're, like, you're a Jedi. <laughs> you should wear your Jedi shirt. You should wear your Yoda shirt. I got my wolf energy shirt yeah, on. Yeah, you do. Um, that's amazing. There's so many things that you've just, you just blew me away. You just blew me away. I'm so impressed with you. I mean, you're talking about these deep, deep emotional realizations and levels and things that you're ready to transform in your body and being willing to say these things that you're like stepping, you're doing that spotlight on all your fears. You just spotlighted the shit out of your fears. And then you, um, I described something to you the other day that was when I talk about my fears, I feel like I'm handing people weapons to then hurt me with and you were just like right there you just you just laid everything out there and you said exactly what every single one of these things are and I've been like watching you do this thing that you're scared of for years now and helping men in this space and so you've been like stepping into your fear and realizing it and changing your behaviors and your patterns and like you're already doing the work 
Like you just have awareness of it, but you've been doing it for so long and I'm stuck on, you're like, I hope they text me back. I'm like, they better not text me right back. I'm not ready for that kind of commitment. Do not talk to me that fast. <laughs> like, I do not appreciate that. I can't even get that with people. And you're like, I'm ready to pour my heart out right now. I'm like, mm, give it a couple hours, all right? It's okay if you give it a couple of days. Let's keep this easy. So I'm very, very impressed with you. I'm in awe of you. Oh, I'm in baby. awe. Well, thank I'm so you. excited for you. What is going to happen? I'm excited too. I'm yeah. scared. I don't know what it means. I don't know. Like it's it would it would be so easy to not know this. Yeah. Right. It would be so easy to just not do this. It would be easy now to just not do anything with this information yeah. or this idea or this thought process. Yeah, right. But, but I can't. No. And I can think like it's so. Like right now, I'm sitting about. I'm sitting here thinking about all the men that I have fallen in love with. Yeah. Yeah. I love that you can just say that. Well, it's like, I'm going to tell you a story. Um, I remember when I was, when I went to Minnesota when I was a kid, when I was 18, mm -hmm. right? This is a long story that we're not going to get into for the people that are listening. But um, when I was 18, I moved to Minnesota for a few months. And um, I worked at a casino that was on an Indian reservation. And the guy that trained me was a few years older than me. He was, honestly, he was probably in his mid-20s. He may have been like, you know, late 20s, early 30s or something. And I was 18 at the time. And um, I totally fell in love with that guy. Like, I just fell in love with the way that he moved and the way that he talked. And, like, there was just stuff about him that I thought was cool as shit. He was just so fucking cool. And I just wanted to hang out and be around him. And, um... Yeah, there's just so many moments in my life when I have met men where that has been the experience, where it's like something just clicks. It's it's literally the, I mean, that's the thing is, that's what made it really easy to see for me was like, oh, it's the same fucking thing. Like there's, I've met plenty of women over the course of my life, right? And I'm not talking about uh, relationships, just meeting women. Um, but suddenly there's something that clicks when I met you, right? You weren't the only woman in the room when I met you. You know, oh, but I was. You were. That's the thing. Something just clicks. Yeah. And suddenly it's like, I want to eat, breathe, sleep, think about, do everything with Stephanie from that day forward. And so it's really easy for me to think about it. And, and my fear, the fear that now creeps in as I'm talking about this, is that somehow you think that, you know, when I meet a man that I fall in love with, <laughs> then it somehow is going to minimize the experience that you and I have or the relationship that you and I have, or, you know, that's just the fear. If I'm talking about men in this capacity, then somehow it invalidates the specialness of our love and our relationship. And of course it doesn't, you know that, but that's the fear. Um, but I, I realize that, that it's the same feeling where I meet a man and suddenly it's like, I really like that guy. I wonder what that guy's doing. Like I think about them when we're not together. Yeah. You know, that's, I think that is an indication that you have feelings for somebody. Yeah. Where you're sitting there doing something and suddenly they come into your head and you think about them. Mm -hmm. And it's like, oh, I wonder what they're, you know, oh, and you think about them. And that happens all the time in regards to men and me. Or <laughs> in regards to the way that I yeah. think about men. It's yeah. I think it's really natural I to do too. think about and wonder about people in your life that you care about. Yeah. Like I agree. I feel like you're nervous about it and it's like no it's it's like that's a good thing. That's a natural <laughs> thing. You're supposed you're supposed to think about other people, not just be like, I wonder what Craig's doing right now. <laughs> you know? Yeah, but the it's, it's the, the part a... that's scary, dear, uh -huh. is the the part of it being another man. Okay. And the way that men are taught to interact and behave with one another. Yes. And what is safe for men to express. Yeah. And what is safe for men to feel. Yeah, there's just a lot of men that's not gonna understand that. Right. And That's even the, if it resonates, they will never admit that because yeah. I'm a man. Yeah. Like that's the part that's scary is yeah. the way that I'm speaking is not common and or normal for men to think about men in that way. Or like I guess 
to yeah it's just not I was going to try to quantify it and be like, well, sometimes this, then like, it's just not. It's not, but there's also, you're, I don't know how to say this without being like, well, you're at a different level now. Cause then it, that's that bullshit that I can't stand. Um, think about the two people that are, are your list. Mm -hmm. Um, how do you think they would respond to hearing this kind of verbiage? totally open to it that's my point yeah they would mm -hmm. totally be like yeah dude i know they will i've had conversations with them that's my point yeah so that's where you're i don't know i think I, I think if you can't speak that way to somebody one of your friends somebody you care about deeply then what kind of like I don't know. I don't want to say like, well, throw that one out because, you know, I'm, I'm the anti-commitment person. So, but like, maybe that's, maybe that's not the relationship for you. You know, if they're, if they can't, if they're not reciprocating that, maybe the, it's that whole thing where you come into each other's lives and I don't know. I just feel like you're going to jibe and you're going to connect with the people that you're going to connect with. Mm -hmm. And it doesn't matter about the ones that you're not going to connect with because whatever the reason was for you in each other's lives served a purpose for whatever it was. But the people that you feel this way about, I think you're going to be able to talk I do openly too. about. I do too. And so it's not scary. Well, it's still scary. No, it's not. I said, trust me. It's I still said scary. it's not scary. And, um, it's not the, the last thing that I want to say, cause it. we're going to wrap up cause we got shit to do. Uh, okay. Uh, you got to go on your walk. I think I I'm going to come with you. <gasps> we didn't even get into what you're doing in your hundred miles in August and you're 75 hard and, well, there you go. There's so many different things that Stephanie that's, that's is it. doing that's changing her uh, life. Uh, and it's amazing. Um, what was I going to say? Well, I don't know. You so say you're going to wrap up and be able to connect with you're them. You're saying in. they're not. They're just not worth it. They're just not worth it. Or, no. It's uh, just not oh, meant to. I realized in, in thinking this way and kind of feeling this in the last little while, right? Mm -hmm. It's also allowed me, like I talked about how I realized um, how much pain I have in the past that I have to process as well as, what was the other thing that I <laughs> identified? In regards to men? Yeah, in regards to this. And it fucking doesn't matter. I'm so nervous and squirrely. Yeah, you're um, okay. I realized in thinking about things this way, uh -huh. how much I need it and how yeah. much I crave it yeah, and how much I've always like reached for it. And mm -hmm. do you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Like I have always from as early back as I can remember, I have wanted to be in love with men and I have wanted to receive love and I have wanted to give love and I have wanted to have loving, caring, connected relationships with men yeah it has been a deep 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 desire for me for as long as i can remember yeah so we can get into all of that i have so many thoughts that is just going to help when it comes time i think because i'm that great yes you are um and it's stuff we've already tapped into of your realization of where the blocks came in because mm -hmm. i hit things when i talk um, where the blocks came in, where the desires there and where I still see that and where there's areas where you are still reaching. Like there's so much to get into and you can tell cause I just watched you like try to like <laughs> rock your head off. You're like, Oh, how do I make this? Thing? <laughs> You're like doing the, um, oh, Stephanie's off camera now. <laughs> Podcast over. <laughs> so yeah, we got some stuff to talk about, baby. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I love you. I love you. Thank you for tuning in folks. Yay. Go to energieslovepodcast.com. Reach out if this episode in any way, shape, or form has impacted you. Also, we don't ask often anymore because it's like pointless at this point, but it still is helpful and beneficial. If you are listening to us on iTunes, take however long it takes. I don't know because we have Android phones, but go and rate the podcast and leave us a review uh, on iTunes because iTunes likes to push people that have bigger ratings and reviews more ratings and reviews to the top of the list of uh when people search podcasts so that would <clears throat> that would help if you did that yeah yeah can i 
say anything else? Can I? Please. I'm going to do a little plug thing that I came across today, and I'm going to somehow share this with you so you can do a link in the notes. Hopefully you can do that. Um, I have a dear friend. Please tell me I can find it. Okay. Um, her name is Elizabeth Gallegos, and she is an incredible teacher who does so many wonderful things. She is on a donorschoose.org project, and she it's called Color the Learning. And so it's to help give her students some Crayola colored pencils and markers to help them remember their learning. She basically works with students, and I'll just, I'll just read so I'm not ad libbing here, who come from trauma filled lives yet continue to push themselves to attend high school to get their high school diplomas. Not only are their lives trauma filled, but they also speak little to no English and attend high school where, while they are trying to learn English. But it's also extremely hard to blend in with the other students while carrying around books that are leveled for elementary reading levels. So she has identified ways that they, when things are color coded and she works with them. So this woman, I met her um, in, I think it was 2000 and seven, 2008. And I met her at the school where she was, she was a speech therapist and I fell in love with this woman. I can say she is just, uh, my kids know her and call her Bibby because they just grew up knowing her and I miss her dearly. She's not here. Well, she's not in Utah <laughs> anymore. So I'm going to put a link on this because I would love to see if we can band together and help make this come true where she can give this to her students. She has always been selfless in giving everything that she has for her students and they become her world and she cares so deeply and so profoundly and she impacts lives. She impacts lives forever with them. She's not how just long, a teacher. How long is that going on? I believe it's until November oh, okay. 21st. Yes, November 21st. So um, it also has until that to get funded or it doesn't. Um, I don't know what it is about this donors choose. I'm not familiar with that platform, but I'm familiar with her. So I want to see what we can do. It's in Thornton, Colorado, and it's grades 9 through 12. And I think we can maybe band together and make a make a little difference, help her out. So we'll Yeah, put, we'll put it in the show notes, and it'll also be on the Facebook page. Uh, you can go check it out. There'll be a link there on the Facebook page. We'll post about it. So I love you. I love you. Bye-bye.